Rock the Stage Show. Each week, international media expert Rich Bontrager has in-depth and personal conversations with celebrities, top leaders, authors, speakers, and media professionals. Now, from the Rock the Stage studios, here's your host, The Trigger, Rich Bontrager. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to Rock the Stage Show, Sunday night, 7 o'clock, every Sunday night, we're giving you a brand new interview discussion with amazing authors, leader, experts, actors, just the best, the best people having very interesting live stories. And tonight we're going to pick up on a recent story, a recent interview we had because you guys have blown up my email and the response has been amazing. So we got to go deeper into it. To be real honest, you made this show happen tonight. It's all your fault. But as we get into it, let me ask you this question here. Do you believe in the power of kindness? How about the concept of the Good Samaritan? You've probably heard the Good Samaritan story in some fashion of someone who comes by, an unknown person, and they do something amazing, surprising to an unknown other person. They've never met. They have no understanding of each other. There may be a need, but they step in at that certain time, and there's an impact, and there's a ripple effect. How about the concept of pay it forward? Now, there was a movie by that name, very interesting movie, but the concept of Pay it forward. Let's just keep that energy going forward of the cool stuff and that willingness to be kind. Specifically, do you believe that one act of kindness can start a chain reaction and actually impact the course and direction of a person's life? Think about that. Do you, do you think one act of kindness, kindness can literally go ding, 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 and then someone's life is forever changed? Well, that's what happened, and that's what we're going to talk about here tonight on Rock the Stage. We're going to get into a very fun conversation here tonight, and recently, Dr. Elliot Gregorius was on our show, and we discussed the kindness factor. That's why you guys love the show so much. The response was great, and we have to go deeper into this and go into what is now the global movement of kindness. Yes, there is an actual global movement Kevin Smith is the founder and visionary and the chief kindness chaser of the global nonprofit Kindness Network. He was inspired to launch this initiative last November. This is brand new, folks. After he was the beneficiary of an act of kindness on Good Friday morning in 2023. The act of kindness changed his life by changing the perspective of giving him a renewed sense of purpose. The story is proof of transformation, the power of kindness. It shows that no act of kindness is too small to make a difference and to change a life that no one is too inconsequential. So we're going to have a lasting impact conversation tonight. We're going to talk about change, personal change, global change. So we're going to get this baby underway, and we're going to bring our amazing guest. And here is the one and only Kevin Smith. How you doing, Rich? It's so great to be here. Uh, ready to rock and roll on the rock the stage. I love the attitude, and you are the kindness chaser. That's one of the coolest titles I think I've ever run into. Well, that was a title, actually, a moniker that the York Academy students in York County, Pennsylvania, gave me. I was uh, they hosted me at their school to uh, speak to their students, and they said that we're going to have the chief kindness chaser, Kevin Smith, join us today. And uh, I liked the moniker then, so I'm going to stick with it. That's how it usually happens. Someone goes, boom, I'm going to crown you. And you go, that's good. I'm keeping that. Absolutely. <laughs> so you, it, it was literally just over a year ago on Good Friday. And you have, and again, I know the story, but you got to tell some of the story because you literally are at the store and go home and you lost your wallet. Everyone's biggest fear. I lost my wallet where? What happened? Well, this this story really is indescribable. There's no way uh, even a book couldn't do it justice. I'll do my best to uh, give you the, the Cliff Notes version. But uh, my wife either gets the credit or the blame, depending upon how you look at it. Because she gave me a honey-do list on Good Friday morning. I never go to the store, by the way. It's been years since I went to the store. She knows better because I get lost in grocery stores. But she even told me exactly exactly where to go, pick up two items, very easy to do. I go to the grocery store, purchase the two items, drove straight home, pull in my driveway at 9.55 a.m. based upon a ring doorbell camera footage. My honey do, do list is over. rest of my day is free. I reach my back pocket and my wallet is gone. 
And all of a sudden I start to panic because I knew I had to have left it behind at the store. And literally just in that instant of panic, I'm literally about to hit the panic button, which is the ignition button of my car. And all of a sudden I look up and there's a good Samaritan woman holding my wallet, asking if it was mine, like an angel out of heaven. And from that point on, my effort to identify who this good Samaritan woman was, thank her in a more meaningful way, pay it forward. It just led to this indescribable, fascinating adventure of a lifetime that really continues to this day. So you're literally spinning out, walking out the door, and bang, they're right in front of you as your Good Samaritan. And it was 9.57 a.m. Our ring del- doorbell camera footage shows her at the front door. And, you know, I thanked her at the time. I offered her a monetary reward. She refused to accept it. And when I walked back inside, I was just overwhelmed by what had just occurred. And I felt that, I mean, she literally went the extra mile for me, 2.6 miles to be exact from the store to my home. And I felt that I should have gone the extra mile for her. A thank you didn't seem enough. And impulsively, uh, intuitively, I just reached out to the local news. I emailed several news organizations that said, hey, this just happened to me. This just inspired me, all the negativity in the world. I thought they might cover the story. It might inspire others if they did. And also, most importantly, I thought if this good Samaritan woman would see it, it'd be a way of acknowledging her in a more meaningful way that I didn't do at the time. And sure enough, a local news organization covered the story and, you know, it went viral and then it just the adventure continues. Well, and it's interesting because Good Friday is for those that are followers of Christ and believers in Christianity. It's the day of the crucifixion a very dark, somber time. And on your day, you have a transformational encounter, which is what that whole weekend is about, by the way. Absolutely. What does that do for you when you you combine those dots? Well, I'll tell you, there's a story behind the story leading up to this. I don't think it was a coincidence it was Good Friday morning. I've been telling my wife for years, I felt it. I sensed it. I knew it. I said, there's something else I'm meant to do. There's some other higher purpose. You know, I'm blessed with a number of gifts and talents, and I just felt they were underutilized. I felt that there was something else in store for me. I didn't know what it was. It bothered me. It weighed on me. And at the same token, I kept seeing the number 1111 everywhere. Um, it wasn't a coincidence. I'd be watching a football game. There's 11 minutes, 11 seconds left in the, the quarter of the half. I turn on my phone. It's 1111. It was like, what is up with 1111? And it actually got to a point where one time I went through every chapter 11, verse 11 in the Bible, like what's 1111? Nothing resonated. Well, after this event happened, uh, one of the quotes I said in this in this news segment that went viral, I said, God's angels are everywhere. And in that moment, this young woman was one of them to me. And when the story went viral, what was the caption of most of the stories across the country? God's angels are everywhere. And when that happened, within a couple of days, I said to my wife, I didn't yet know what or how. I said, this is it. This is what I'm meant to do. This is what, you know, I'm, I, this is what I've been telling you about for years. And uh, and then soon thereafter, thereafter, I realized what 11-11 meant as well. And so everything happens for a reason. Uh, no doubt in my mind, I was meant to go to the store that day. I was meant to lose my wallet. And I'm convinced that this young, good Samaritan woman was the one meant to find it. Now, this is where... I- Personally, when I was researching this a little bit, the thought that grabbed me was we live in a space and time where young adults, young people are somewhat given a bad rap and partly the laziness. They don't care. They're not going to help you out. They're not going to go the extra mile. They're very self-absorbed in a very generalistic way that people are viewing the young people. Your encounter did not match up to that. You matched up with someone who did care, got in the car, looked at your address, drove directly to you and acted upon it right away instead of pulling out the cash and chucking the wallet. Absolutely. Well, there's perception and there's reality. And I think this story is a microcosm of the the bigger picture. I think there's this perception of maybe the younger generation. I think there's this, this perception that often the media portrays about how bad things are, how bad people are, how bad society is, and and you can feed into that subconsciously. And I could tell you a story about the power of suggestion that would blow you away, Um, but but it affected me. But the reality is very different. Um, The truth is, is that the good is the norm, not the exception. Bad things happen, but that doesn't define us, it refines us. 
And I think this young woman and what she did going above and beyond is representative, I think, the generation as a whole. That's very different than what we're often conditioned to believe. Well, yeah, because her comment I saw in the media clips, her comment was, this is just what I do. I, I, she said, I never thought of anything else not to do. I was, this is his wallet. I got to get it to this guy. I'm going to do it right now. It was instinctive for her. Oh, absolutely. Well, and how this story unfolded is fascinating. I actually discovered, all I knew was her name. And, uh, and basically, after the story went viral, I'm like, does she even know? Because that was the reason I reached out to the news in the first place. And knowing only her first name, I did a Facebook search on the name Brooke. I mean, do you know how many Brooks there are in the country, Rich? I mean, more than a few, I can tell you that. And I was about to give up after several minutes. I came across a profile picture of a young woman and her dog. And that was the connection. I was like, it looks like her, maybe. I reached out to her, and sure enough, it was her. She actually thanked me for thanking uh, her. And she made a comment. Very, she was very humble, but it resonated. And it really led to this adventure. She said, you know, I'm just the blurry face because they blurred out her face in the segment to protect her identity, protect her privacy. And I was like, no, you're more than a blurry face. I mean, you made this story possible, you know, all this positivity, but it, it stuck with me. And, uh, but at least I knew that she had seen the segment. Well, a couple of days later, Inside Edition reached out, became aware of the story. They were going to do a story. And they asked if I knew who Brooke was. I said, yes. And she agreed to do a story. And I was like, great, because she's not gonna be the blurry face anymore. Everyone's gonna know who she is, as I do. Well, at the last minute, another storyline emerged and uh, Inside Edition didn't do the story, went on the back burner, story never aired. And I'm like, well, now what? I mean, this yeah. Good Samaritan deserves more. Well, get this, uh, I, I struggle like, what can I do? And fate and circumstances again, a couple of weeks later, I had a fateful meeting. It was scheduled long before Good Friday morning. It was on my calendar. Uh, the executive director of the York County SPCA, Stephen Martinez is his name. Um, I was on the board years ago. He would meet with me, update me on the organization from time to time. So we had this meeting scheduled. He was late for the meeting, apologized profusely for being late. Now, do you have any idea, any guesses, Rich, why he was late? <laughs> he was shopping in a store. Well, it, it, good <laughs> guess, but incorrect. <laughs> he actually, believe it or not, forgot his wallet. <laughs> you can't so, make this stuff up. You can't make this stuff up. And so I said, Stephen, you forgot your wallet. I shook my head. I said, well, did you hear about my lost wallet story? And he had, and I shared the story and I shared with him how I discovered this young Good Samaritan woman because of a profile picture of her dog. And he made a comment and it resonated. He said, you know, Kevin, I've always felt that pets are like social glue that bond people and communities together. And, you know, I agree with that comment. I'm an animal lover. I'm a pet owner. And something stuck. And like my gut, my instinct said, you know, I think there's a deeper connection. Wow. So I went back. I scrolled her Facebook feed again. And what did I discover? That she was very passionate, not only about animals, but the York County SPCA. And that's when I had the idea of a community celebration of kindness, bringing pets and people, communities together. We're going to have an event at the York County SPCA to honor this good Samaritan woman, celebrate kindness. And that's really where this concept of a celebration of kindness and kindness week, that's really where the journey began. And then it just took on a life of its own. It moved from a different venue. It got too big for the SPCA and all these ideas kept coming, like kindness week proclamations. Honestly, you can't make this stuff up. Impossible put into words, but that's, that's how the story really started to really take off. So you do have a mission and it's a big big mission to create a culture of kindness in communities throughout the world. You want community, 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 community to embrace the concept of kindness. Absolutely. What have people said about this vision of yours? What did they, have they freaked out? Have they embraced it? What's happened? Well, it's not just a pipe dream. I believe it's actually possible. I think people are starting to see the path. There's, there's a number of tactical elements, but I will tell you in this journey, once I started to see a path to bring people and communities together, it became so much more about just acknowledging this good Samaritan in a meaningful way. It became about making a meaningful difference and bringing people and communities together more broadly. And I started to see a path and I started to just meet with people day after day. Um, honestly, I stopped counting at 250 people by last July and like trying to get people to see what I saw. Can you see what I see as the potential we can achieve here, how this can inspire people? 
And it was, it was, I call it the most meaningful, exhilarating, exciting journey in my life, but also the most, the loneliest journey because I could never find anyone to really get there in the trenches with me to really buy into what I was trying to, to do. And it was either like, either didn't see it. I was like, the struggle was, can I get them to see what I see? And the reality was, is that most couldn't see what I see. If they only, if they saw it, it was only a portion of it. Yeah. And I think more than likely, I think they thought I was absolutely nuts. <laughs> And I can't say I blame him because I questioned myself, am I really crazy here? Because uh, honest, but I saw it and I persevered and now there's a path and there's a number of elements which I can get into. Um, but this already has made a difference that impacted several lives. I can tell you of, a, of at least one life I know persons living today that was ready to take their life because they saw the video on my homepage that inspired them and gave them hope. Wow. And this story is giving other people hope as well. And we need it now more than ever. So it's not just a pipe dream. I think it's very, very attainable and very, very possible. I, I and again, I totally agree with you. This is the perfect timing because I hear people spinning. I hear uh, people losing confidence, losing hope. They're just the political election. And many other things are just keeping us in the cycle of fear and unknown and unknown. And the idea of kindness in communities can unlock so much of that, I think. And I know you've got two slogans that I know about. You may have more, but one of them is see the good. Tell us about this concept of seeing the good because I think it's a powerful concept. Oh, well, there's you see the good. It's also see the good, be the good, go the extra mile. And that relates to the story. So see the good. Well, I was being conditioned without realizing it to see the bad. I was watching the news too much. I was a news junkie, always on my Twitter feed throughout the day. And most of the news is negative. Yeah. And I'm a positive person by nature, at least I thought I was, but I didn't realize how that conditioning was affecting me. And I started to see the world through a glass half empty lens. It's still a glass half full. And when this event happened, it was like it snapped me out of a subconscious trance. It like realized, no, the good's the norm. The bad's the exception. And, uh, you know, see the good again. Right. So I see the good. I see the whole the world in a whole different light. But it's not enough to just see the good. It's important to be the good, too. And I wanted to go the extra mile for this young, good Samaritan woman, go the extra mile in the spirit of kindness like she did for me. So that's really in the meaning of see the good, be the good, go the extra mile. But by being the good, I'll elaborate a little bit more on that, because the other aspect and this changed my life in, in that way, changed my paradigm of the world. The other is that for all the negative events that happen in the world, all the things that weigh on us, mm -hmm. and we, we've seen them, we read the news, we know what's going on. There's yeah. so much that divides us. I used to feel powerless to do anything about it. It weighed on me. It bothered me. I would often obsess over what I couldn't control, thinking like, who am I? Who is Kevin Smith to do anything about this? And maybe it sounds crazy, but in, a, in an ironic way, after this happened, I started to th think that, you know what? Maybe I can do something about it after all. And if nothing else, I'm committed to try. And the paradigm or the, the epiphany I had was, is I was looking for others like we all are. Some magic leader is going to come in and bring us all together. All come by and we're all peace, <laughs> harmony and, you know, baseball, hot dogs, apple pie and Chevrolet. Right. And uh, I realized that I'm going to wait forever. We all will. That that leader, those that's not going to happen. No. And I realized that the change I wish for begins with me. And I've mm. got to focus on what I can control. And I start to see a path that maybe it would inspire others. And I think the reality is if we all just look in the mirror like I did after a good Friday morning, I realize I can do better. I'm trying to do better, play my part. And if we all did that individually, if we all strive to just be the reason someone believes in the goodness of people each and every day, the world would instantly be changed. Well, and it's kind of interesting you're saying that I'm, I'm thinking... How much more of a generic name can you get than Kevin Smith? <laughs> or as you said early, the blurry lady. <laughs> yeah. Most of us feel like the blurry person in the picture. We feel like we just blend into the woodwork. And what you're speaking to right now is you're an individual that can make an impact. You can be that domino effect person. I, I said at the beginning, when you reflect on that yourself now, how does it feel to be the domino effect? Well, I, 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 I always say this is a we endeavor, not a me endeavor. Um, it's going to take a village you know, to make an impact. But, you know, you know, we all have the ability to be the change we wish for. And uh, it's just a matter of being cognizant each and every day of the role we can play. Ordinary people 
do extraordinary things and can do extraordinary things. Look, I'm just an average Joe. I'm not any better than anybody else. This good Samaritan woman, you know, we're just average people. And the reality of it is, I think why this resonates is it shows the transformative power of kindness. Everything, everything that's already happened, all the positivity that's already occurred and what will occur, we can trace back to this one original act of kindness. And that's the beauty of it, of, you know, of it the ripple effect. We can see it. Yes. But I think the beauty of it as well is that it reminds us like how many acts of kindness, just like this one, happen every day, everywhere, yes. that have just the impact are just as powerful, but we never hear about it. We never learn about the ripple effects. So I think it, it reminds us of our shared humanity. It reminds us of the goodness that I think is inherent within us all. It reminds us that we all have that power. The power of kindness is unlike any other. This changed my life. I know it's already changed other lives. It's gonna to continue to change lives. It's gonna bring people and communities together. And every single one of us is part of the story. See, that's the other aspect of this. This story, as beautiful as it is, this story is not Brooke's. It's not mine. You know, Brooke might have uh, you know, written the introduction to the story. I happen to, to write the forward, to pay it forward, so to speak. Yep. But the most beautiful part of this story are the chapters yet to be written that all of us are going to write together. Because I believe in the character of humanity. I believe the character of our communities and our country and the world. And we're just waiting for a spark to ignite a flame, to ignite a kind inferno, because this really reminds us of there's so much more that unites us than divides us. Well, and you're doing that through your kindness citations. Again, this is about community by community. But you now literally have people giving kindness citations saying you did it. You're doing it. It's encouragement, but it's also something as silly as it sounds. They get something to hold on to. Yeah, how that, that that's got to be powerful to pause and recognize and pass it on, isn't it? Well, think about changing the paradigm. Look, we all know the issues with police community relations in, in recent years and some of the very unfortunate events that have happened. But that again, the exception, not the norm. You know, our police are generally trained to see the bad, mm -hmm. right? And, and look, we've got to protect our communities, and there's bad elements. But I believe the good in our communities is far exceeding exceeds the bad. Well, let's train our police to also see the good. And let's recognize and reward the best of our communities for people that are doing kind things and, and, and improving our communities. But the same token, we know the vast majority, overwhelming number of our police are good people. And yes, mistakes happen. There's bad elements from time to time. It happens to any organization, but that does not define our police departments. So yeah. it also allows our communities to see the good that defines our police. And the, what happened in your county, our police commissioner, he could not have been a, a greater champion of this effort. He was in his patrol vehicle with a camera on, issuing citations, and it brought tears to the eyes of many people who got those citations because they were being seen, right? And I know you have a phrase about seeing the gold. Yeah. There's gold, there's gold in everyone. There's good in everyone. It was a way for people to be seen because they saw that someone else saw the good in them. Yes. And it was also a great thing for our police. I mean, morale, just doing something positive. And it was all over the county, York City, all of your county, and that's a yeah. model that I think we can replicate in police departments everywhere to improve police and community relations. Well, Governor Shapiro, the police departments had the kind of citations going on. I've heard about blood drives. I've heard about schools, colleges, symbolically doing this. And it's already taken on a life its own. Oh, absolutely. Well, think that there's a framework of Kindness Week in the framework, you know, Kindness Week worldwide, is the Saturday before World Kindness Day to the Saturday after. We made it eight days. We went the extra mile to add a day of the week. There's eight characteristics of kindness, symbolically a day for each uh, uh, characteristic. And so the framework of Kindness Week Worldwide is let's officially recognize what I believe is humanity's ask, greatest asset. Let's have a proclamation. It's largely symbolic, but symbolism matters. So let's have mayors, governors, every community in the country, I believe, in the world should really embrace this. It's interesting we're talking about this right now. We're coming up on... Republican, Democratic convention, the election, all this stuff. And I, th I think no one can argue with the facts. The campaign so far have been anti-kindness. It's been cheap shots, a lot of venom. What would it take to turn that around to get back to respect, kindness? We may not agree. We have different ideas and visions of our country, but yeah. to do it with kindness. What, what would that one area do, do you think, to our nation that is actually divided right now? 
Well, not so coincidentally, when does Kindness Week Worldwide begin? The Saturday right after the election. Think we're going to need more kindness? I think we are. And uh, But I think in terms of how we inspire kindness, I think we all, in our own way, have to be better. We all have to make a conscious effort to go the extra mile. So our politicians, our elected officials, yeah. you know, they need to see the good in our country and, and be the good by lifting us up with aspirational words and vision and positivity and, and bringing us together, not tearing us apart. They need to go the extra mile to just meet us in the middle, because that's exactly where I think our country is. And this polarity needs to stop, because if you're a true leader, you got to stop dividing us. you got to bring us together. I don't care what party you're in. You know, we all have a role to play. And our politicians, elected officials at all levels, all parties have a role in that. Our media has a responsibility, too, to look in the mirror. Oh, and please. Just, yeah, go there, please. Oh, my gosh. I mean, they need to see the good like this reporter did to cover the positive stories and, and go the extra mile to share more of the, of the good news that is the overwhelming news. I mean, this narrative that the only thing that's newsworthy is, is the, you know, the news has a mindset that if it, if it bleeds, it leads. My attitude is, well, if it's good, it should. Right. And, and, and why aren't the positive stories just as newsworthy as the negative ones? And on, on Kindness Week, on Good Friday, can we, can we agree to at least have half the stories be positive? You know, at least half? Yeah. You know, we, we know that's still not anywhere close to the ratio. Can we lead with a positive story and end with a positive story? And you know, I, I seriously question this narrative of what is newsworthy. I don't buy it. I, I think the positive stories are just as newsworthy. And the reality of it is people in the media, they're average ordinary citizens like we are. They have a job to do, report the yeah. news. I get it. But they have a responsibility because I will tell you the subconscious conditioning that's going on because of the reporting that we are seeing yeah. every day, reading, watching, it is dividing us. And it and it and it's I think it's a uh I think it's we need to have more integrity. We need to have ethics, and we just need to look in the mirror at all levels, and and including at the at the average you know citizen level like like you and me. What's been the biggest aha for you in all of this? I mean, yes, you had the money, the wall come back, the Good Samaritan, but what's beyond all this? Have you now literally creating a nonprofit organization? You're growing this. What's been the biggest aha that you step back and go, wow? Yeah. Well, I am convinced, no doubt in my mind, that with passion and purpose, there is no dream that's unattainable. Anything's possible because there's no other explanation as to what's happened and what's occurring. You know, passion and purpose drives it all, but it takes a village. I mean, I could point to any one of dozens of people. And were it not for that one person, we wouldn't be having this conversation. You know, people are going to talk about you know, my passion and purpose, but it's not just me. There's multiple people with the same right. passion and purpose who believe in this vision, who are rallying behind it. But also the epiphany in the, in the awareness is, which is a story I think it resonates with everyone, because it's true. No act of kindness is too small to make a difference and change a life. And anyone, anyone, you, me, could be anyone, has the ability to make a lasting impact and even change the world, I would argue, through kind actions. And I'm convinced in my mind, I believe this one act of kindness by this young Good Samaritan woman is that one event that was a tipping point for a ripple effect, unlike any the world has ever seen. And it's already started and uh, it's spreading. And it just shows that transformative power of kindness that every single one of us possesses. So there's another thing I want to go back to about Brooke, because she made it very clear in her statement. She did it without even thinking. Hopped in her car, went. She could have gone to the store, left it at the counter with the manager and said, somebody dropped their wallet, boom. And she could have been clean of this thing. She did it without even thinking. I, from my perspective, a lot of time we overthink the act of kindness. Yeah. Because we've been taught, don't take the time. It's not worth the effort. There's nothing going to happen. Or, or we're just... Again, we just don't think we're that important in the scope of time. But is there something about inside of our gut? Most people have kindness waiting to erupt, but it's almost like we've got a lid. We've been told, don't believe it, don't do it. But if you go with your first instinct, I think most people will go, like Brooke, right to the act of kindness if they go with the first instinct. Do oh, you also see that? I, I completely agree. And, uh, you know, getting back to Brooke for an instant, 
I mean, it wasn't just that in, impulse and she knew right away the right thing to do, but she, she literally went the extra mile in another way too, because she wasn't driving that day. Her friend was driving. And, uh, and another more coincidences I've learned after there's a story behind the story and, and Brooke, you know, discovered my wallet and saw my driver's license, you know, um, and the address. And she said, we got to return it. Her friend did not want to, her friends like, no, he'll get the wrong idea. We can't do that. Brooke insisted, nope, he lives close by, we're going. There you go. You you have two different views, right? In the very same car to get her. We can't do that. Correct. I mean, one was, you know, look, and we're all we're all human. We all feel this way. One was seeing the bad, seeing assuming the worst. Yes. The other was seeing the good, assuming the best, right? And and we all have these feelings, right? And we are, you know, we're human. But these are the dynamics that we're often up against. And at the end of the day, I'm convinced that good will always prevail over bad. And, and there's good inherent in everyone. Yeah. And sometimes you got to dig for it, but it's there. Yeah. But the irony is, is that when you do good for others, the real gift is not the gift of giving to others. Or, you know, it's not the, the gift the others receive. It's, it's the gift of giving. It's what the giver receives in return. You know, yes. self-worth, mental health, all the things that are issues you know, when, when you give to others, it's a feeling unlike any other. It's the best feeling in the world. Not just what you do for others. It's what you do for yourself. And, and there's just no words that could describe that feeling. Because the reverse is true. If you have that instinct to go do it and you don't do it, I know firsthand personally, my regret level goes up. Of I missed it. I knew I should have done it. And I'm kicking myself not just for a day, not for a moment, for several days, it stays with me because you know in your gut, I could have just simply done right then. Well, and it's funny you mentioned that because honestly, this adventure that began on Good Friday morning and started to take a life of its own, you know, it was all consuming. I mean, it was, uh, I, I, the analogy I use, I sprinted a marathon for seven months until we lost a nonprofit, which was never my intent, by the way. I just wanted this to be over. I just wanted to thank this Good, Sam good Samaritan woman be done. I was burnt out. Um, and it was my brother-in-law who uh, he's been in entrepreneurship his whole career. Um, the SPCA wanted me to write my objectives in terms of what I wanted to do at this event. And I, and I started to write a timeline and it was sitting on my table. It was 50 pages at the time. It's now 250, by the way. <laughs> and my brother-in-law was reading it. And again, he's this is what he does, entrepreneurship. And uh, He's worked on entrepreneurs. He advises startup companies. He knew what I was doing, but didn't really know too much about it. So he started reading this document that coincidentally was on my table. And he starts reading it. He looks up at me. I was sitting in my corner chair, my dog in my lap, coffee in hand. And he said, Kevin, he said, do you realize that you have created in five months a sustainable, replicable model that has a higher probability of success than even the most promising startups he's ever worked with takes five years or more to do? And I looked at him. I'm like, what are you talking about? What model? I'm just, this is just saying, thank you. This is an event. What are you talking about? He said, Kevin, you can't let this end at York. He said, this could benefit communities all throughout the world. He said, you've got to start a nonprofit. And I looked at him and again, I'm burnt out. I mean, I'm spent. I mean, this literally almost killed me. It was that intense. And I, after the first time I saw it and I'm like, oh my gosh, he's right. And like, as much as I wanted to let this go for me to get my life back, you know, I was, everything was in balance. Everything was honky dory. I had the rest of my life figured out. And then this happened. And then I saw it. I'm like, oh my gosh, my life's never going to be the same. It's, uh, it's meaningful, exhilarating, but it's scared. It scares, scares me at the same time. But I realized that if I don't pursue this, if I don't go the extra mile and take this where I know it can go to make an impact, make a difference, bring people and communities together more broadly, then I'm part of the problem, not the solution. Wow. And it was at that moment, I mean, I knew it was very special and meaningful what we were doing, but it never occurred to me that how big this could get. And then at that point we started and said, what are we gonna call the organization? Because I knew we had to. And I was like, well, Kindness Week PA, Kindness Week York. He's like, no, Kindness Worldwide. I'm like, really, Michael? I'm like, uh, World, that sounds a little bit, you know, he said, no, it's worldwide. I'm like, okay, well, and guess what? He was right because that's exactly where it's going. Well, speaking about kindness worldwide, you have put together an amazing website. I've been there. You've got downloads, you got PDF, you got templates for, uh, for the citations. Tell us about this because you have packed this loaded 
to literally help people jump off and join you right now. Yeah, well, thank you. There's a lot of information there, and it, it's all heart, no overhead, because right now it's it's just me and all volunteers. So what you see is all a volunteer-driven effort, but we have resources. We have toolkits. We have a number of initiatives, uh, one of which is Kindness Week Worldwide, our signature initiative. So any mayor, any community, anywhere can take that toolkit, and they want to give me a call, have a 15-minute conversation. There's no reason anyone, I don't think, would, wouldn't want this in their community. So there's a toolkit on bringing Kindness Week to your community. Tells you how to do it. There's resources for the see the good and the be the good cards we developed. They can be downloaded for free. We want to get them out in our community to, to plant the seeds of kindness, make it top of mind and intentional. Um, we have a music element coming up. It's going to be groundbreaking. Uh, we're going to unveil it in York. Uh, we're hoping to release it on the International Day of Peace, September 21. We're going to have some nationally named artists involved. There's a community, a foundation called Shine Foundation. Uh, Peter Botros and I are collaborating together. Peter's a great heart-centered person, very talented musician. It's called Music Collaboration, Musical, S-E-E, -E, Musical, Music Collaboration. It's going to take a framework, and we're going to make it a collaborative, groundbreaking initiative that I think is going to set the stage for something bigger. So that's coming. Um, there's some teasers on there on that. Um, obviously, uh, anyone, we have an ambassador's program, anyone who wants to bring kindness to their community, uh, be an ambassador of what we're trying to do. We have some prominent individuals already named. We're looking to name more. There's more in the works. But if you're interested in that, being an ambassador, you meet the qualifications, please reach out to me. Uh, all the contact information is there. The story is there. The original Channel 8 segment that started this adventure is there. Um, and a brief video on the homepage at the top, really, I'll tell you the story that we've kind of alluded to today, what happened, some of the highlights. And I'm convinced the magic that occurred in York, Pennsylvania and surrounding counties, if the magic that occurred last year in November during the first inaugural Kindness Week Worldwide, if it can happen here, I am convinced it can happen anywhere and everywhere. It was the most magical, meaningful week of my life to see how this one act of kindness unfolded in the, in the way that it did, brought this community together here locally, it can happen anywhere, and that's the magic we're trying to bring elsewhere to the world. And all those resources are right there on the website. Well, go hit the QR code, scan that. It'll jump you right there. And it is packed full with a gold mine of material. And again, Kevin, phenomenal. As we wind down here today, I'm just thinking about what's the impact been on your family, your hmm. biological home front family, because – this was you and Brooke, but the first people I'm sure you turned to was your wife and family. And now this is a global mission. What's the impact on them? No, that's a great question. I appreciate you asking it because family is everything to me. My faith is everything to me as well. Yeah. And, uh, you know, um, we're not called to be comfortable. I think often we're called to be uncomfortable. And, you know, when you hear the call, you know what that means. And, uh, it's been a, it's been a journey, but my wife has been very, very supportive. You know, it's, it's imagine my time and energy is often focused on I have a day job as well. I'm very passionate about, but now the nonprofit world and but very, very supportive, very engaged, you know, clearly sees where this is going. But it has taken a toll. It's taken a toll on my life work balance, the things that yeah. I used to do, do in my spare time. But I know that this is a meaningful. This is going to make an impact. This isn't about me. It's about we. It's about us. And uh, sometimes you got to die to self for the greater good. And uh, hopefully by example, will inspire others to just in their own way, go that extra mile. And uh, you'd be amazed at how an, an impact that that can make more broadly. Kevin Smith, a great story, an amazing aha moment for so many people. I'm sure thanks for taking the time to drop on the Rock to Stage show and share it out here today. So great to be here. Thank you so much. See the good, be the good, go the extra mile. I love it. Kevin Smith. Wow, there we go again. See, we do one show and then someone else gets talking about it and then we have to do a follow-up and we may have to do another follow-up because this is amazing what's happening. One incident, one surprise moment and it gets turned into something greater, bigger and as Kevin said, it's growing and growing. He's the founder, he's the visionary, the chief kindness chaser, the kindness worldwide. Go check it out, go, go learn more about it. Hopefully tonight's show, hopefully you've been inspired. Hopefully instead of the doom and the gloom that we both mentioned that's out there, the pull for the negative first, maybe this has inspired you a little bit to go the other direction and say, you know what? 
let's start seeing the good. Let's start celebrating the good and go with our gut instinct. Embrace it, share it, and step into it more and more. Hey, that's going to do it for this edition of Rock the State Show. We'll be back here next Sunday, 7 p.m. Eastern time, for another amazing conversation. These are not interviews. These are discussions with amazing authors, speakers, leaders, actors that are going beyond just the rock on the stage and the way you know them. There's something greater, deeper going on, and we love mining those stories and going deeper. Come on back next week. We'll see you here at 7 p.m. Eastern time for another edition of Rock the State Show.